Welcome to my advanced class for Iron Demons, which have been substantially improved for Patch 3.1. Let's go all over the nitty gritty, shall we? Please like, subscribe, and consider donating through my coffee page to help me keep making these videos. I'm not monetized, so every tiny bit of support really matters. The Iron Demon has been upgraded to 45 melee attack, a half respectable 25 melee defense, 120 armor up from 100, same speed, same unbreakable leadership, weapon damage has been increased to 300 total with the same breakdown, so 90 base, 210 armor piercing, max splash attacks are up 2-6 from 4, as in, you might knock a lot of units into the air, but you're only doing that weapon damage to a max of 6. Bonus versus infantry is plus 20, up from plus 18, and the missile weapon is unchanged. And charge bonus has gone from 50 to a very beefy 75. But, but, Far Wolf's moving is fixed now! Yay! This is another revolution, plus they brought down the recruit time to two turns just like the skull weapon. Now you can borderline spam these units and make their assistance the enemy's problem, not yours. In my Skullcracker video, I went through all the Hellforge options that apply to using these war machines as battering rams, which the Skullcracker is better at. Hellforge upgrades apply to the Iron Demons. Whether you sell out completely to the Skullcracker style, the artillery style, or a hybrid, the most melee relevant ones can be found in that video. I'm saying that so I don't have to repeat most of what I said for the Iron Demon side. If you want to fling it into melee combat, all that good stuff applies. It's not as good as the Skullcracker at that job, but it can still do quite a lot. Also, and if you see this in the video later, maybe this was changed, but I couldn't force order an Iron Demon to bear through a friendly line and hit the Jade Warriors that unit of Infernal Guard was brawling with during an unwalled small settlement attack them. Cowardly bound demons may be a problem for you, and in subsequent battles, I just can't make them force melee attack. I can charge through them just by clicking past them, but I can't actually make them do a manual charge with ammunition still in their loadouts. If that's being a problem for you, just work around it or bring a Skullcracker without such fickle sensibilities. All of a sudden, with Fire Wolf's moving fixed, you can use the Iron Demons as ultra-heavy skirmishers. The guns operate in a kind of cone anyway, so just like, for example, Outriders, you could drive toward an engaged line and smack it from the flank through the ranks. Ideally, so that you won't hit your own guys, but the potential is devastating right there. On top of that, you have to ask, does the enemy have anything faster than 60 speed? If not, you can expend your entire ammo capacity on skirmishing. Your enemy probably has something over 60 speed, so we move to the next part. Now that the kit has been fixed, the fact the guns have suppression, denying the enemy 30% of base movement, that's a big deal. Suppression gives these units even more life by giving you a reliable way to slow down the enemy's charge. Piercing caster shots mean that the suppression affects everything being hit. This buys time for your forces, be it with magic, artillery, whatever. Hellforged Ordnance from Red Skill Trees gives plus 20% ammunition and 10% range, so your armed demons would have 132 range. Firing on the move with that kind of range is impressive. Bloodied Bombardment means provide the rank 7 or above, plus 12 missile strength with whatever damage type it is, 10% reload time reduction, so another pure DPS increase, and 15% missile resistance to make you tougher against harassment fire. Continuous Bombardment from the military tech tree past the Kodai boosts gives another plus 10% to all your missile damage and another 10% ammo. Ammunition Caches gives another 10% ammo as well. Weapons of War gives you another 5% range, a 10% speed bonus like the Skullcracker and Infernal Engineer on all war machines, meaning that two armed demons will mutually buff themselves with this ability. So what does that do? It gives the unit emanating it 15% resistance more than before, and offers a 20% reload time reduction to allied missile units provided another war machine is in range. So you need a Demon Smith and one war machine or two war machines with this tech, but then any ranged unit within the abilities range is effective. So why am I going over all of this? <laughs> That's because minus 30 reload time is utterly insane. One of the biggest problems with any artillery unit is the time it takes to attack the enemy, meaning that, except in the longest battles, it's hard for you to get true value out of them. All that extra ammo tends to be wasted. Here, 
maybe you'll get a lot of that ammunition into the enemy. It was a huge problem for me in 3.0. Now you have more viable skirmishing helping you get something out. Let's go really fast through texts that apply to true artillery too. Extra powder means that as long as your ammo is 80% over, you get a 30% boost in missile damage. The Iron Demon didn't hit hard enough, often enough, for this to feel good in 3.0. Now it could mean something. Closely related is the 15% ammunition boost. And if an Infernal Castellan uses restock on you, a higher max ammo count means you get more shots, you get more extra powder affected shots, and you get more raw damage. Related to both of those things is extra reload, which helps push you back over 80% for a little more awesomeness. If you're going with a full arty build, you might have all three. If you're specifically working towards an Iron Demon build, you might start off early with the Barrier Demon because it helps every unit and takes away nothing. And hey, maybe you can skirmish that way. I think what's non-negotiable is to get held out. If you play multi, this will spoil you because you get it for free, but if you don't, you need this. You need this in campaign. Perfect Vigor is absolutely critical to maintaining your efficiency in firing and in defending yourself in melee. So besides the skirmish option, what else can you do? I've mentioned the Infernal Castellan style option, and besides that, you can try to turn them into flankers. This creates problems, obviously, but if you can wear down or wipe away the enemy cavalry or whatever shields the flank, you can either fire into the enemy's flanks or just ram through them. Which one you choose is dependent on the enemy type, the situation, the Hellforge upgrades you have, and whether the more Pada ability is up or not. You're going to deal with arrow boys differently than with the trolls that you can't just run over. Arm demons are true hybrid war machines. You want to be flexible with them and you want to always have the option of uh, just charging in and hoping for the best. And while this is not as true as with the Skullcracker, Iron Demons are competent against Footlords and Elite Infantry Leather. This gives you extra options in a roster hurting for anti-Footlord options besides just shooting them to death. And that tends to be all or nothing. The annoyance I had while testing in campaign may herald some annoyances in urban combat because of that difficulty in forcing a charge, but one Skullcracker and those problems are substantially eased. What's more important is that we see the Iron Demon has a place. It has a purpose. It has a kind of specialty. Now, there's no way an enemy, even in campaign, will just let you skirmish with Iron Demons and not try to stop you. And though you can get Vanguard to point with a Demon Smith at a certain level, you can't get stock for Choo Choo's of Doom. You can, however, get stock units into ambush positions and lead valuable enemy units into them. I think that's how you really get the sweet sauce with these units in open field battles. I will be doing videos for the pure artillery units, but the Iron Demon occupies an interesting spot. It's like a middle option between the Skullcracker and the Magma Cannon. And I think that's a very good thing because it offers you something different, it offers you pure armor piercing, and it gives you choices. And I think that's a very good thing for a roster. Take care and have fun out there.